Now this little thing here can make a huge difference to the performance of a golf club. And in two ways really, it can adjust the lie angle to better suit the uh, style of your swing in terms of your delivery at impact. But maybe more commonly it's used to adjust the loft of a club that might help you fit gaps in your bag. And usually that kind of adjustment will be made in your driver, your fairway woods or perhaps even your hybrids. Well, until now that is, because, uh, well, I think it's time I introduce you to the new fully adjustable Ping Eye Crossover. Now, I've collected dry ball data and very shortly I will explain as to why I think this club's introduction will change everything we know about adjustability in that long end of the bag. But first of all, let's take a closer look at this Eye Crossover, which I think is a huge change from what we've seen from previous iterations, and in my opinion, a huge leap forward. It's been sort of streamlined, if you like. It's a more uh, compact version of the predecessors it's uh, got a lovely finish that sort of matte black with that little gloss strip in the back makes it hugely appealing on the eye it's certainly aimed at the better player in today's video what i want to find out is it exactly that or is the forgiveness for everybody to take advantage on what i believe is a very good option for many golfers in particular from what i've seen from dry ball data this is going to surprise a few of you now I'm sure you all agree it's a pretty decent piece of kit from Ping and that adjustability is a real in interesting introduction and what I'm going to do with this 4-iron, this comes in a 2-3 and 4-iron option, the 4-iron being 22.5 degrees. For my purposes in this video I'm going to increase the loft by 1.5 degrees to maximum loft in terms of where we can go to with this, so a 24 degree lofted 4-iron or lofted iron in fact that I will have in hand. That's where I'm going to collect the dry ball data and that's what I'm going to use out on the course because whilst I'm going to finish off collecting dry ball data before I do that I think I've got to go and take this out on the course and see how it performs in reality it's not the greatest of days but I like to get out there for two reasons I want to see how it performs out there but I also want to see what it sounds like outside of these uh, indoor acoustics so uh, outside for now I'll catch you all later for what is some real interesting dry ball data. And as miserable as it might be today here at Carden Park weather-wise, I always feel like you've got to get out on the golf course to get a true reflection of how a golf club performs. So it's the four crossover. We're at the first tee. It's a perfect club in many ways. Maybe not from the white, it would be driver, but let's see what this thing does. I imagine the acoustics to be different out here, so sound and feel changes from an indoor scenario, so hopefully I can give you some better feedback, but sits really nice at, uh, at the address position. And uh, I've got this lofted with one and a half degrees increase of loft, so this is at 24 degrees. What's interesting, first ball, the ball flight was incredibly high, but we are from a slightly elevated position here. But that's what I like about this thing. There's not a huge amount of bulk and mass around it, but for some reason that CG seems to pop the ball incredibly high for what is still only 24 degrees worth of loft. And that's the bit that really interests me about this club. Which, you know, interesting enough, that probably went just uh, a little bit further than I would expect, to be honest with you. It's, um, it's definitely carrying, don't forget, I'm going to keep saying it's 24 degrees, so I'm expecting around a 180 carry um, based on other clubs in the bag. That was off a tee peg. This is, well, I'd say it's from the rough, but it's sitting up nice, to be fair, so I should be more than comfortable playing it. Um, but again, normally where you might be favouring a, uh, a lofted hybrid, this sits, presents quite a, loft, a lot of loft at address and doesn't feel too, um, well, I like the look of it, to be honest with you. Now, we've got shot tracer on, ball flight's incredible again. And I said to Hannah, I think we've probably got to the front edge there again. So we're playing, if you can see the 150 markers, we're playing a good 200 plus and we've got to, I think, at the front of the green there. But either way, I said to Hannah off camera just how hot the face seems and the ball seems to be firing out there. And uh, we'll see that again in dry ball data at the end of this video, just exactly what this thing is doing. But from my perspective, it sounds and looks as though it's firing out there quite fast, to be honest with you. At this moment, I'm really impressed with this thing, you know. Oh, going the hole would be nice. 
that's half chance of a par then but what i was trying to show you there really was the fact that we probably a little bit shorter than i uh, expected like i said i thought we were on the fringe so realistically we've probably traveled a similar distance that we did off the tee which is 180 yards out the rough so it's doing exactly what i expected to do in terms of yardage cover we got here really really quickly but the point i wanted to mention was this that We've already said about the adjustability of this thing and what I'm seeing by bringing it out on the golf course and the dry ball data that I've collected is whilst I wanted to add loft to perhaps fit a gap in my bag, when I see it performing out on the golf course here now, I'm seeing the ball flight is perhaps a little bit too high. So having that adjustability and that option in an iron is a real interesting thing now because I can have a little bit of a play with this. Maybe we'll knock it down one and a half degrees back to its 22 and a half. And if we don't like that, we can move even further. And that's this thing that is really impressive about this club is the fact that we've got so much adjustability built into a long iron. And as you know, it's a huge problem and issue for many golfers is to try and fill those voids at the top end of the bag so i'm loving the fact that i've got that adjustability in an iron right i mentioned on the first tee i talk about sound and feel and it's so so different when you come out on the golf course than what you get with acoustics inside and i've got to say i'm often critical of ping's uh, sound and feel i think at times it can be quite harsh and quite hard is the way i describe it i've said that i like so the g425 driver it's one of the only things i would criticize it for but this is different and uh, the sound is a good balance between i always think acoustically you want to hear and feel like that ball is firing out there but i want some soft responsiveness into their hands don't forget this is a cast club and we're getting that we're getting that kind of soft feeling so i love the responsiveness that i'm getting from the club outside here in the golf course anyway forget about sound and feel we better hit another tee shot and see if we can keep this thing going down the middle because um like i said at the moment I'm super impressed with this thing. Oh my word. I'm nailing this, aren't I? Mm. I tell you, I'm absolutely nailing this on the course, and it's funny how you breed confidence very, very quickly once you hit a few good shots and how irrelevant of what a club says it does if it starts to perform well in your hands then like i said you become very confident very quickly perfect type of hole where it's very tight off the tee um perfect long iron shot but again it's just that confidence that this gives at address what i want to know from you at this stage and what i'm thinking is like how many of you love the idea of having a long iron option that has adjustability so normally from this position i will be playing probably a uh, a hybrid but now this gives me an option to play what i prefer playing really which is irons and how many of you would fall into that same category because believe me this is a very very playable if you want to call it a driving iron whatever you want to class this as it's a very playable type of club well pretty much position a and i think uh, let me just see if i can concentrate on this one for a little moment oh do you know what i'm playing half decent here this morning that's right on and again I'm going to leave it there. Interestingly enough, that was the i230, which is another review which will either become probably before this one. And again, these things are still performing as good as they were in the original video. Um, but I'm going to leave it there. I'm going to play a cut across up 18. The rain's starting to come down. I'll hit a couple more four irons up there uh, or four i crossovers. But the basic message out here is I've seen enough, to be honest with you. Um, it's very, very playable, which is the word I keep using. I'm loving the ball flight loving the descent angle so this becomes a club now that you can play off the tee you can play it into long par threes you can play it from the fairway you can play it from the the rough so it's got plenty of versatility it ticks all the boxes at the minute doesn't it right one thing i did notice or have noticed throughout all the shots is that i've completely forgotten about the size of that uh, hosel because that was a concern indoors and my initial reaction was and one of the issues full stop with adjustable long irons is that the hosel has had to be made just that little bit bigger and like i said i picked up on it indoor but throughout playing here out on the golf course addressing the ball tee through the rough I've not noticed at all so something clearly uh, paid far too much attention to and uh, has no impact whatsoever right now i'm sure you'll all agree it's pretty impressive out there on the fairways as well and uh, it is as i've said ticked a lot of boxes but i hope you've hung around to see the dry ball data because yes it's uh, sort of confirms what we've seen out there on the fairways but it really produces some incredibly good numbers you know and uh, i'll put them on screen for you now 
I only collected whatever it is, six, seven, eight shots, I don't know, because very soon this was very consistent and it became apparent what this club does. The first interesting thing is the launch angle at 19 degrees for a club that was lofted at 24 degrees. That's really a high launch angle. The spin was really good relative to loft again, so three and a half thousand revs on average. If you compare that, like I said, to a typical four iron, then that is a real good number. But then you look at the descent angle, which sort of correlates with the launch angle, 43.6 degrees peak height of 32 uh, yards and an average carry of 184 which is again what I was suggesting it was doing out on the fairways but the numbers why they're so interesting and why they're so impressive just how high that ball launches the spin number and the descent angle mean that it's an absolute superb club for a number of different reasons and pretty much like I said just confirming what I said out on the fairways that high launch and spin and descent angle means it's going to stop into long par threes but then the ability to flight this ball a little bit differently with an iron in hand also makes it a real appealing club that you might not necessarily be able to do with the likes of fairway woods and hybrids which we typically see the adjustment in now I know we've seen um, adjustable driving irons in the past I think Cobra still might have one in their lineup TaylorMade certainly did but haven't continued with it I'm not sure as to why they've dropped them out of their lineups and why it's uh, so few options out there but for me like I said a lot of people don't like playing hybrids in particular and prefer to play long irons but then can't have the adjustability to gap their bag properly at that long end so what ping have done have really sort of seized on a gap in the market but not only produced something that yes it answers a question in terms of adjustability but they've done it in a very refined way go back to how that hosel looks you would not know you are playing a club which often has that sort of bigger wider broader hosel which can be a bit visibly off-putting they've managed to get that very compact indeed the whole club is very compact and overall just a real real winner in terms of what ping have produced here hats off to them it is a superb club and another superb option in the long end of the bag which is often where so many of us average golfers really struggle to get that bit right anyway that's my thoughts at least tell me what you thought of that dry ball data tell me what you thought of that performance out on the course because maybe i got this one wrong but for my part this club is pretty damn perfect there's very little to critique on this that would be any form of criticism right maybe i'm just having a good day thank you for watching it was a grim day out there and uh, i hope you enjoyed our efforts and i'll see you all soon